Hey there, how's it going everybody? Peter here with BlackRock Business and glad to be back with you. Another fine winter day here in Minnesota. It's actually been negative 30 this week, which is really crazy. Uh, kids were home from school three days out of the week. I mean, just nuts. But that's why I have more time to make videos. Today we are going to talk about creating vendors in your QuickBooks point of sale. It's going to be relatively easy. Uh, there's just going to be a few fields to pay attention to that are kind of important. Don't forget to head on over to blackrockbusiness.com where we've got all of your answers, tutorials, videos, hardware needs, whatever. Whatever you need as far as QuickBooks and point of sale, go on over to blackrockbusiness.com. All right, let's get into this. Uh, here we are in the point of sale. Uh, here's your main screen, and you will notice we have the vendor list icon right here. You can create a vendor on the vendor list. You can also create a vendor while creating a receiving voucher. Uh, so, or purchase order, excuse me, either one of these. Let's get into it. Vendor list up here in the right-hand corner. I'm going to hit Add. And here's our Adding a Vendor screen. Uh, I'm just going to throw in ABC Company. If you didn't know it, uh, vendors are who you are actually going to order your product from for your store. And QuickBooks Point of Sale has a really slick system with vendors. Uh, it's not just that we need vendors in here so that we know where your products came from, uh, but you can actually create a purchase order and send it out to a vendor right inside your point of sale using the information that you put in here. So for ABC Company, uh, vendor code much like your department code is just going to be a short quick code to identify the vendor by it's just a little faster and easier and you can also put that on things like price tags and other reports so we got ABC company and you're probably going to put your sales rep info in here we got uh, Bob Johnson of course and this is really important you want to get your reps email uh, if you want to send a purchase order automatically through uh, the point of sale and make it head out through your email, uh, it'll automatically create the document with all the things that you're trying to order and it will send it to Bob Johnson. So if you want to, uh, a lot of the rest of this stuff is just kind of pedigree information that nowadays with the wonderful World Wide Web Internet, you don't really usually need a lot of this information you might want their you know you might want their website but otherwise street city state zip unless you're actually uh, mailing something in snail mail or sending them a package you probably don't need this information uh, you may want their phone number if you ever want to call Bob Johnson at ABC company and maybe his mobile but otherwise um, some of the more important fields are over here and we're going to go over them. Uh, when you're creating a purchase order, actually when you are receiving a purchase order and uh, your QuickBooks point of sale is going to automatically create a bill in QuickBooks accounting, we want to tell QuickBooks accounting uh, how long you have to pay that bill. So whatever terms you've set up with this company, uh, 30 days is pretty customary. Uh, it's going to set that as a due date for the bill when you receive products from ABC Company. Now, uh, discount percentage for a certain number of days. There's certain companies that do this. Let's say they give you 5% off if you pay within 10 days or 7 days. Maybe they want it. If, if they get paid quickly in a week, they might give you 5% off because then they can you know turn that money over faster and it's better for their company. So... Depending on who you're dealing with, they might do that. Some people do it, some don't. Now, account number is pretty important because when you send this purchase over, purchase order over to Bob, uh, he's going to look at the top of the purchase order and see your account number so that he can bring you up on his end. And then we have alternate phone numbers and maybe an alternate uh, rep, John Smith. And that's mostly it. I mean, that that's the really important stuff. Vendor notes, you know, you might say something about this vendor and the way that they do business, uh, like they aren't open on Sundays. 
any kind of little information or note you want on your vendor, go ahead and put there. The history pane right here, that's going to come in later. I'm, I'm going to skip over to a real vendor here and we'll show you. So uh, I'm going to save ABC Company. And there we have it. Now they are available to attach to items. They're also available to create purchase orders under. And if you email that purchase order, it'll go to this email address. Pretty awesome. Uh, let's choose uh, one of these vendors that has already been running for a while. So in this case, I look at the details and I can actually look at the history here. This looks like there's only one receiving voucher under this one. How about this one? One receiving voucher under this one. All right, so here's one that actually has some more extensive history. Multiple receiving vouchers and orders have been received from Zenana, whoever that is. And so that's what the history pane is for. That's pretty much it. Thank you for coming along on this video and learning how to create a vendor. We will go over other tasks with vendors, such as ordering with purchase orders and receiving and a uh, few other things that you can do with vendors that are a little more complicated in another video. My name's Peter, and this is BlackRock Business. Thanks for coming along.